Wouldn't it be great to have a custom user interface that would show all your smart home devices laid out on a floor plan of your house? So that with just a glance, you could see which lights are on, which doors are open, where people are moving around in your house. Of course, you'd also want to be able to control all of your devices from this wonderful user interface. Well, your dreams are about to come true. Let's set up Home Assistant Floor Plan. It should be obvious, but I'll say it anyway. To use HA Floor Plan, you need to have Home Assistant up and running. I don't believe it matters if you're using HassIO or Haspian or some other installation, and it doesn't seem to matter what version of Home Assistant you're using. HA Floor Plan isn't an add-on. It's not even really extra software. It's just a different way to display states and controls that requires a few changes to a few of our files and then the addition of a few other files in some subfolders. And that's it. Enough yapping. Let's get to work. Step one is to go to this GitHub page and download and extract the zip file. The mastermind behind HA Floor Plan is Pitar Kozel. Hope I said that right. He's really done a lot of great work, so make sure you thank him when you see him on the street. Thanks, Peter. Now back to the install. When you extract the zip file, you'll want to copy everything here, except the configuration.yaml, customize.yaml, readme, and how to make your own floor plan files. You don't really need those. But everything else, you want to copy and then paste into your main Home Assistant config folder. That'll give you everything you need to get started with HA Floor Plan, including an example floor plan. Now, in order to see the floor plan in Home Assistant, we need to make a few modifications to our own files. Open up your configuration.yaml file and add these two sections, one for the front end and another for the customized panel. If you already have some binary sensors, then add another binary sensor that looks like this. Now this next part you need to add to either your customize.yaml file or to the customize section of your configuration.yaml file. It doesn't matter which. And finally, you're going to want to add this to either your groups.yaml file or to the group section of your configuration.yaml. Once you've made those changes, make sure to save those files and then go to Home Assistant and run the configuration checker just to make sure that you didn't screw anything up. If it gives you the green light, then go ahead and restart Home Assistant. Once Home Assistant starts back up, you should see the example floor plan right on your overview page and you should have a new button on the left panel that should take you to a larger image of your new floor plan. Well, that floor plan looks pretty cool, but it's not your floor plan. And clicking on it isn't going to do anything for your Home Assistant entities. That's going to take a little bit more work. To get your own floor plan and entities all set up, we need to draw your floor plan as an SVG file. Then we need to add your entities to a floorplan.yaml file. And then we need to customize how you want those entities to look in a floorplan.css file. Those are going to be three really important files for your HA floor plan setup. Floorplan.svg, floorplan.yaml, and floorplan.css. To draw your floor plan as an SVG file, you're going to need a software called Inkscape. I tried a couple other SVG editing programs, but none of them would let me add properties to the objects. And that's the way that we're going to interact with our Home Assistant entities. So as far as I know, Inkscape is the best and maybe even the only SVG software that will work for Home Assistant floor plan. And it's free, so we might as well use it. Another genius Home Assistant user named Patrick has created some really nice written instructions about how to draw your own floor plan. They'll be quite a bit of help to you if you get stuck. Thanks, Patrick. Once you have Inkscape installed, open up a new file and save it as floorplan.svg. Then open Document Properties and change the units to pixels and change the page size to 1024 by 768. Now if you know the exact pixel count of whatever you want to use to display your floor plan, you can use those dimensions instead. But generally, 1024 by 768 is a good all-purpose size to use. Now the next step is just drawing your house. If you've got a digital image already of the layout of your house, you can import it and either use it as a background and just add icons on top of it, or you can use it to trace out the walls and the rooms of your house. There's a lawnmower outside and it's really loud. If you don't have that, 
you can either guesstimate the size of the rooms of your house or run around with a tape measure, or you could use one of these new apps that lets you walk around your house and click on the corners in your camera and it draws the floor plan of your house. I haven't tried it, but it seems really cool. I have some digital images of the floor plan of our house, which are really just pictures that I took of the blueprints. The pictures themselves aren't good enough to use as background, but it's really great to use them to trace the walls in my house. Now for the Maker Fair demo, I used an actual image of the new remodel of our basement. It looks like this. There are Inkscape tutorials out there that are done by people who know a whole lot more about how to use it than I do. What worked well for me was to place rectangles for the rooms and then use other rectangles to fill in hallways and closets and then outline everything with straight lines and then set the width of those lines to three pixels. That seemed to show up pretty well. Again, having an image of the floor plan of my house to trace was super helpful. Depending on how much detail you want to get into, you could seriously spend hours working on your floor plan. But for the sake of actually getting this project done, I'm going to stop here. I'm sure I'll come back later and add more details. Some amazing Home Assistant users have even done 3D models of their houses with rendering and lighting and even animations. Here's a link to the forums topic where people share their floor plans so you can get some ideas of some really cool stuff to do. The next step is to add icons as objects that will be linked to your Home Assistant entities. Pitar recommended using the nounproject.com and I concur. There are a bunch of different objects to choose from and most importantly, you can download them as SVG files. Grab the icons you like and start importing them into your floor plan drawing. I found that the icons that are solid work really well because later we're going to assign fill colors to indicate state changes. Duplicate your icons and place them where they belong. Now we're going to start assigning Home Assistant entities to each object. Right click on your icon and then select Object Properties. Now in the box that says ID, either type or copy and paste the exact entity ID from Home Assistant and then hit set. That object is now going to be tied to that entity in Home Assistant. Now repeat that process for every entity that you want to see on your Home Assistant floor plan. Each Home Assistant entity can only be assigned to one object. If you try and assign an entity to a second object, it'll tell you it already is assigned and you can't do that. It doesn't matter at this point what color any of your icons are because we're going to assign the colors in the CSS file later. Once you've got your floor plan drawn, you've got all your icons for all your objects and you've got the entity IDs attached to each object, you're ready to save your floor plan and make sure that it goes in your new floor plan folder. Now we're going to move on to the floorplan.yaml file. Thanks again to Peter for including a floorplan.yaml file that we can just modify with our own entities. That was one of the files that you copied into your homeassistant.config folder. So find floorplan.yaml and open it. It's okay if you leave the parts of this floorplan.yaml that you don't use. It won't really hurt anything. Or if you'd like, you could comment out all the sections that you're not going to use. Most of the real work here is done under the subheading groups. These aren't groups like you're probably used to dealing with in Home Assistant. Let's look at my switches group to start with. The name you put here doesn't really matter. It can be anything at all. Under Entities, you want to list all of the Home Assistant entities that you want to have assigned to the same color changes based on their state. So if you want something to be yellow when it's on and blue when it's off, put it in this list. But if you've got other entities that you want to have green when they're on and red when they're off, you're going to want to put them in a different group. We'll assign the color changes that are associated with the different states when we get to editing the CSS file in just a few minutes. Now under states, we need to define for the floor plan what state these entities can be in. In most cases, that's going to be on or off. But for other things like presence detection, it can be home or not home. Or it could even be multiple things like home, work, school, store, etc. So for this group of entities, we're going to assign the state on and the state off. Now for each state, we're also going to define a class. The class is going to point to an entry in the .css file. That's where we're going to assign the colors. Now for this demo of our dungeon basement, I made my light icon a torch. So I'm going to call the classes 
for these entities, torch on and torch off. And finally, if these are entities that you want to interact with, as in click the icon in Home Assistant and have them turn on or turn off, then you want to assign an action. In this case, the domain is Home Assistant and the service is Toggle. I tried to include a variety of different examples of the kinds of entities that you might have that you want to include. So I included lights, a lock, a cover, like your garage door, presence detection, which is the little green orc, that's me, and even a motion detector, that's the dragon. Once you've made all your changes to your floorplan.yaml, save it, and then go to Home Assistant and check your configuration again. And if you've got any problems with your floorplan.yaml, using the configuration checker in Home Assistant will let you know. Anytime you make a change to the floorplan.yaml, you're going to need to restart Home Assistant for those changes to take effect. However, changes that you make to your floorplan.svg file or to your floorplan.css file do not require that you restart Home Assistant to see those changes. That's fantastic. The less times you have to restart Home Assistant and wait for it all to boot back up, the better. So now we've drawn our floor plan and we've assigned our entities and their states in the floorplan.yaml file. The last step is to modify the floorplan.css file to adjust the appearance of our entities based on their state. Now, full disclosure here, I know jack about writing CSS files. So if there wasn't an example file to modify, I'd be lost. So here's my non-coder interpretation of what's happening in this CSS file. So what's happening here is the state of an entity in Home Assistant is tied to a class. And that class is assigned some appearance qualities like fill color, opacity, stroke color, and stroke width. Now you can customize how you want your icons to look when their state changes by changing those class parameters. So for the switches in my basement that I made look like torches, I assigned the class torch on, torch off. So here, under those classes, I assign the colors that I want to see based on the state of those entities. So when the torch is on, I want a bright yellow. When the torch is off, I want a gray. You define those colors by using the hexadecimal color codes. There are plenty of tools to use to find your hexadecimal color codes. If you just type hexadecimal color picker in Google, you'll get a nice little tool as the first entry. That's the one I used. Pick the color you want, copy that hexadecimal code, and paste it into the entry in the CSS file. Simple as that. You can also assign fill opacity. One is fully opaque. Zero would be invisible. I found that 0.2 or maybe 0.5 worked pretty well. Now if you used icons that didn't have a fill, but just had an outline, then you'll use stroke to change the color. And you can also do stroke width to change the size of the line. I used my gate, which is really the shop lock, as an example of what to do with an icon that has an outline instead of a fill. Now for each class that you assigned in your floorplan.yaml, go to the entry in the CSS file and make it look just like you want. In my demo, I included a few switches, a lock, a cover, presence detection, and motion detection. You can also use templates for text and images to get values to show up like temperature and humidity, or to get the icon to change based on the state. But I couldn't really get that to work, yet. But I will. Oh yes, I will. But again, for the sake of getting this project done, I had to put templates off for now. That's it. Your floor plan should be pretty well done. There were a lot of parts to putting together this floor plan. So let's do a quick review of all the things we did. First, we copied a handful of files and folders into our main Home Assistant config folder. Then we modified our configuration.yaml file, including our customize and groups sections or files. Then we created our floorplan.svg file in Inkscape. Then in that floor plan, we added icons and associated them with our Home Assistant entities. We added entries for those entities in our floorplan.yaml file and referenced our state changes to entries in our style file, which is floorplan.css. And finally, we edited our floorplan.css file to make those icons look the way we want them to look. Sounds simple, but it can take some time to do. Well, that's it. We're up and running with HA floor plan. There is a lot more that you can do to customize your floor plan. 
This is really just the beginning, but you've taken your first step into a larger world. So now jump in there, create some awesome floor plan stuff and go post it in the Home Assistant forums. And then if somebody could help me figure out how to use the templates, that'd be really great. Thanks. Well, that's all for now. To find out what I'm doing next, if you like what I'm doing and you wanna help me out, if you need more help than I can provide, and if you just wanna to go to one place for all this stuff, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.